Hello everyone, and welcome to the Weird Music Genres Iceberg. Today we'll be looking at six tiers of music, and each one will get more obscure as we go down the list. Before we start, I'd like to give a shout out to No More Evelyn over on IcebergCharts.com for making this. And without further ado, let's dive in. Hyperpop. When you think of hyperpop, these are artists like 100 Gex, Charlie XCX, etc. These are pop artists that typically use a lot of autotune and combine super accessible sounds with very noisy sounds. The genre is typically very eccentric, the vocals aren't always great, but that can play into the appeal. Nightcore. I had never heard of Nightcore before this, but googling it made a ton of results pop up. There are a lot of people arguing about whether Nightcore is music that is sped up or slowed down, but from what I got, it's actually not really a genre. What people do is take already made songs and speed the pitch up and the tempo. This started as a trend from an artist that actually went by the name of Nightcore, and it was started by two guys from Norway. Psychedelic. This is a very common genre, especially nowadays. These include your Pink Floyds, your Tame Impalas, and Hip Hop, your ASAP Rockies, and Travis Scotts, and Pop, maybe your Beach Houses. Basically, I'd describe it as music that gives the same effect as taking drugs. It's very dreamy and spacey, and psychedelic influence can be found somewhere in pretty much every genre. IDM. This is an acronym for intelligent dance music. Essentially, it's a type of dance music that's less for dancing and more for studying and thinking. The arrangements are usually more complex than a usual dance song and can be very sample heavy. Aphex Twin and Boards of Can Canada fall into this category. Future Bass. Future Bass is a genre that takes elements from both dubstep and trap and combines them together to create something a little more soft and beautiful. It's very synth heavy and often features some vocals on top. Cloud Rap. Cloud Rap sort of ties into psychedelic rap. Usually the music is more centered around the production than the lyrics. It's very lo-fi, hazy, and dreamy. Artists like Young Lean, members of Drang Gang, and even ASAP Rocky can be considered cloud rap. Nerdcore. Nerdcore is typically a hip-hop genre. The genre usually covers things like popular media, fandoms, anime, video games, sci-fi stuff, movies. A lot of the samples found in Nerdcore are from video games, movies, and other music. Chiptune is also very common in Nerdcore. That basically just means using like an 8-bit synthesizer. Pretty much Nerdcore is just a very nerdy version of hip-hop. Up. Plunder Phonics. This is a genre I was familiar with going in, but I didn't know it had so much backstory. The word Plunderphonics actually comes from an essay written by composer John Oswald. It was titled Plunderphonics or Audio Piracy as a Compositional Prerogative. This genre includes heavy sampling of educational films, news reports, radio shows, or anything really. Sampling has always been a big thing in hip hop and other music, but usually there are other elements involved, whereas in Plunderphonics, it uses only samples and nothing else. Perhaps the most popular example of this is Since I Left You by The Avalanches. A lot of people cite it as a very beautiful album and I'd have to agree. The way they meshed all the samples together is incredible. Vaporwave. Vaporwave is a little more than just a music genre. There are a lot of outside variables that also come with vaporwave culture. On the surface, it's a subgenre of electronic. Usually it is also very sample heavy. There's a lot of smooth jazz samples used in it, elevator music, lounge music. It's usually very slowed down and transposed. But other than the music, there's a certain art style that comes with it. I'll show some examples on screen, but it sort of reminds me of like synthwave black metal. Black metal is a subgenre of heavy metal. It's usually always anti-Christian, includes extremely fast tempos and screaming vocals. Vocals aren't always screamed, but they can also be growled. There's a huge emphasis on raw recording and atmosphere, and I would argue it's one of the more interesting genres of metal. Post-punk. This subgenre of punk focused less on the hardcore and very simple aspects of punk and instead incorporated elements that weren't strictly rock based. Post punk became a lot more avant garde. The vocals weren't always sung in an angry fashion. Uh, they're usually sung quite different. The vocals aren't angry like they would be in hardcore punk, instead they're a little more urgent. There's a fine line between gothic rock and post-punk, but for example, some bands that can be considered post-punk are Joy Division, The Cure, and The Smiths. Shoegaze. This is a guitar-based genre that I've talked a lot about on the channel that relies heavily on loud words and distorted sounds, but mixes them with very soft, faint vocals. Usually both the guitars and vocals are reverb-soaked, and it 
makes for a very dreamy trance-like experience. Vapor Trap. This is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's a mix of Vaporwave, Trap, and Cloud Rap. Essentially, it's kind of just cloud rap, but usually more 90s pop culture is present in the samples. Future Funk. Future Funk deviates itself from Vaporwave in the sense that it's usually very synthy, more upbeat, and has a lot more elements of disco and funk. It's almost always full of retro Japanese samples, and anime is usually on the cover art. It sort of reminds me of Daft Punk, but with a way more retro style. I'll also just say this is easily my favorite genre that I've found on this list. If you need a dopamine boost, I would definitely check out some future funk. Memphis Rap. This genre obviously began in Memphis in the 90s and it's where a lot of horrorcore rappers get their influence from. 3-6 Mafia were the pioneers of the genre and really the first true trap artists. If you listen back you'll hear so many similarities between today's trap music and 3-6 Mafia. When we're talking about horrorcore usually the lyrics are very dark and deal with gore and violence. This wasn't always the case with Memphis rap but it was very common. Breakcore. Breakcore is another sub genre of electronic dance music and is characterized by very complex breakbeats. There are usually a ton of samples involved and they're played at very high tempos. Something I found interesting when I researched this is that it really helps people with ADHD focus and when I listened to it it made sense because there's so much going on in the music that it helps you focus on not focusing. Dungeon Synth. Dungeon Synth is a very broad genre, so I'll try to cover as much of it as I can. Basically, it's a combination of black metal and dark ambient, almost like an even more atmospheric version of black metal. It's usually a little bit less harsh, focuses more on the ambience and atmosphere than the shrieks and super heavy guitars, although it still includes both of those things. Dungeon Synth usually involves a lot of fantasy motifs, although it doesn't always. It has also been compared to a lot of video game soundtracks. It's a very interesting genre, and I would recommend it to anyone trying to get into more metal. Jungle. Jungle is a genre of dance music that developed in the United Kingdom. It's very similar to breakcore because of the very fast breakbeats that come with jungle music. It uses so much different percussion and vocal samples and these vocal samples usually come from reggae and hip-hop and funk. It was also a very early genre and kind of paved the way for a lot of genres that would come after it. Industrial. Industrial music is usually very harsh in both sound and themes. Allmusic.com defines industrial music as the most abrasive and aggression fusion of rock and electronic music. Although the sound deals with rock and electronic music, the lyrics are usually very punk-driven. Industrial bands include Death Grips, Nine Inch Nails, and Throb and Gristle. Juke. This is a form of dance music that uses a lot of hip-hop samples, and it usually gets very fast in tempo, and it began in Chicago. Math Rock. Math Rock's usually defined by very niche chords and structures. Usually it has extremely weird time signatures that give it a sort of mathematical sound, and that's where the name Math Rock comes from. Bands that use this are American Football or Slint. Lowercase. Lowercase music is an extreme form of ambient. It's extremely minimalistic and usually quiet sounds are amplified to very high levels. It's also a very broad genre. Usually you're making music with things that you wouldn't even think would be instruments. For example, an artist named Steve Roden made an album called Forms of Paper, and throughout the whole album, everything you're hearing is him handling paper in different ways. Noise. Noise is broad because we hear noise a lot in rock, pop, and pretty much every genre, but I think this entry is is referring to the harsh noise movement. Think something like Pulse Demon by Mersbo. It's extremely unconventional. It's supposed to be the most challenging type of music out there. Usually features very loud screams and frequencies that can be extremely difficult to listen to. Grindcore. Grindcore is a fusion of heavy metal and hardcore punk that originated in the 1980s. Think hardcore punk but with the noise amplified to a thousand. The guitars are usually very tuned down, very heavily distorted, huge grinding bass, 
very fast tempos. Usually the vocals are shrieked or screamed. The newest example of grindcore that I can think of is Worm Rot's new album, Speedcore. Speedcore usually deals with a very high tempo along with aggressive themes. Most of these songs reach about 300 beats per minute, which just sounds ridiculous. It doesn't really sound like you're listening to music anymore. And there are subgenres of it that we'll get into later that have to deal with the BPM. Christian black metal. This is the exact same thing as black metal, except there are no anti-Christian themes. Instead, it's all about praising God. A lot of people also coin this genre on black metal. Lollycore. Lollycore is a branch off of breakcore, except in lollycore, they all use heavily distorted or high-pitched anime vocal samples, and that's pretty much all there is to it. They just take these anime samples and pretty much turn them into a breakcore song. Drone. The best way I can describe Drone is that it's essentially just dark ambient. I would describe it as Vaporwave's evil cousin. It's usually pretty disturbing, dark, atmospheric. You're supposed to feel a little bit uneasy or uncomfortable listening to it. It can be cool to listen to for the experience, but it's not something I would throw on casually. Alright, from here on out, the descriptions are going to be a little bit shorter than usual. A lot of these genres get so obscured that there's really not that much information out on the internet about them, but I'll try my best to describe each one. Terrorcore. Going back to Speedcore, Terrorcore is sort of an early version of Speedcore. These songs usually come in at 250 BPM. It's a fast variant of hardcore techno and usually includes samples from horror films. Power Violence. Power violence takes the most hardcore aspects of punk and amplifies them. It's usually socially and politically charged and extremely fast. Microtonal. I couldn't find much about this one other than the fact that it uses intervals smaller than a semitone. It seems like less of a genre and more of a musical style. Noisecore. Noisecore is music that is supposed to be extremely nihilistic and hopeless. The best way I could describe it is it's sort of a form of grindcore, like a more hopeless version of grindcore, and while it's more hopeless, it's just as intense. Porno grind. This is pretty much just grindcore, but with lyrics strictly focused on sexual themes. Splittercore. This is the same thing as speedcore, except it becomes splittercore when the BPM is between 600 and 1000 BPM. Black Midi. So I'm not sure why this is on here, because Black Midi is actually a band and not a genre. However, it makes sense because they sound like pretty much nothing else. They combine a lot of free jazz and prog rock into their music, but their lyrics are pretty punky and anarchistic. They also just released a new album, so go check that out if you're interested. Danger Music Danger music is essentially music if music were performance art. Wikipedia describes it by saying it is based on the concept that some pieces of music can or will harm either the listener or performer. An Australian noise musician named Justice Yeldham played an instrument made of glass. They would shatter it on stage and it would put wounds in their face. Crazy. Midicore. Midicore is usually a mixture of harsh and fun songs combined in the same song. They usually include grindcore brutality, but mix it along with upbeat, happy video game sounding melodies. Gore noise. This is essentially grindcore, but with a ton of brash and harsh noise and even faster drum tempos. A lot of these genres sound so similar now, getting to the bottom of the iceberg that it's just hard to deviate them. Stockog slash Gulag. This is another band, not a genre. They changed their name after some time, and I didn't personally listen to them, but according to them, they represent abysmal suffering in their music. They're a noise band and want to highlight terrible aspects of humanity. Noise Wall. Noise Wall ties back into harsh music in the sense that it's just unchanged noise for a very long period of time. So basically, just think the loudest sound you could possibly hear, but that's on loop for like an hour. Extra Tone. This is another subgenre of speedcore, and songs with a BPM of a thousand or higher are known as Extra Tone. Backpedal. This is just when you take other black metal songs and play them backwards. I didn't find anything about this, but I assume this has to deal with musicians releasing music right before they end their lives. Sort of like leaving a note, but through music. I could be wrong though. If anyone has any other details, let me know. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. There's a good chance I'll release more Iceberg videos soon, so make sure you hit that notification bell so that you know when I drop a new video. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.